Good evening as friends welcome to the Hindu news analysis by Shankar AS Academy for the date 9th of August 2022 these are the list of news articles we will be going through today Now let us start our discussion. Look at this open article. This open article is about launching a tribal health mission for the tribal people in India. Here you should know why this article came today. It is because today is International Day of the World's Indigenous People. The article discusses some of the issues faced by the tribal people and also offers some solutions. Okay? This is the crux of the article. So in this discussion we will see the need for health mission for tribal people in india and we will also see the findings of the report regarding the state of india's tribal people's health okay this is the plan today but before getting into the discussion i have highlighted here the syllabus regarding this discussion you can go through it now let us start our discussion what comes to your mind when i say tribal people hilly areas people wearing traditional dresses ritualistic dances everything right but there is a lot of things that we do not know about them did you know that 11 crore tribal people live in india as per census 2011 they are enumerated as scheduled tribes now we are going to take a quick detour see who declares a particular tribe as scheduled tribe see the constitution does not specify the caste or the tribe which are to be called the scheduled caste or scheduled tribes just remember the constitution empowers the president to specify the scheduled tribes in various states and union territories which is mentioned under article 342 of the indian constitution in the case of states president issues the notification after consulting the governor of the state concerned note that any inclusion or exclusion of any caste or tribe from the presidential notification can be done only by the parliament and not by a subsequent presidential notification see the reason i am discussing these facts here is because this will help you in integrated preparation this will be useful for your prelims and you can use the points in your mains introduction also see this is how your preparation and your note making should be So reading the article as an integrated whole will help you remember points and revise easily okay now coming back to today's article we saw that there are 11 crore tribal people in india this is 8.6% of india's population which is the second largest number of tribal people in any country in the world this is a proud thing for india's diversity but there is also a worrying factor it is given by the lancet study titled indigenous and tribal people's health 2016 the study found that india is having the second highest infant mortality rate for tribal people and the first place is occupied by our good neighbor pakistan see this is not a proud moment for us having said that now the article has given us some of the findings from the report titled state of india's tribal people's health The report was submitted on the very same day in the year 2018 by an expert committee on tribal health. It was a 13-member committee appointed by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. And the chairman of this committee has only written this article. Now you can understand how important this article is. Now coming to the findings of the report. The first point is that tribal people are concentrated in 809 blocks in India. these blocks are designated as scheduled areas now i have a task for you go and find out who declares scheduled areas in india and take notes of the provisions of the constitution regarding scheduled areas so take this as a homework and after finding the answers post the answer in the comment section also okay now coming back to the findings the areas that tribal people live are designated as scheduled areas see this is not the actual finding here it is found out that half of india's tribal population live outside the scheduled areas they are living a scattered and marginalized minority and this is making them powerless okay this is the first point of the findings 
the second point is even though there is a decline in under 5 child mortality rate among the tribal people the percentage of excess under 5 mortality among scheduled tribes has widened when compared to others moving on the third point is child malnutrition in tribal population is 42 percent for others it is 28 percent so the malnutrition is 100 percent higher in tribal children what does this data show us this data shows us that there is a huge disparity between the tribal population and the general population okay moving on the fourth point is malaria and tuberculosis are three to eleven times more common among tribal people know that half of total malaria deaths in india occur among tribal people this is despite the fact that they constitute only 8.6 percent of the national population the fifth point is as per the report diseases such as hypertension diabetes mental health problems such as depression and addiction and even cancer and suicide are increasing among the tribal population see these diseases are more difficult to treat so these diseases threaten the health and survival of tribal adults the sixth point is tribal people are heavily dependent on government run public health care institutions such as primary health centers and hospitals but here the worrying fact is there is a 27 to 40 percent deficit in the number of healthcare facilities and 33 to 84 percent deficit in medical doctors available in tribal areas so it is clear that government healthcare faces lack of funds and lack of human resources particularly in the tribal areas the seventh point is there is hardly any participation of tribal people in designing planning or delivering healthcare this is happening at all levels locally at the state and even at the national level see these are the major findings of the state of india's tribal people's health report see how is this related to the examination see upsc is never going to ask you to list out the findings of the state of india's tribal people's health report but you can use the points we discussed in your main answer see consider this in the first paper, there is a question which asks you to list the issues faced by the tribal people and the measures that can be taken to address them. See, in this, you can use these points that we saw in the introduction. See, according to me, 95% of the people who clear prelims and appear to mains examination are of the same standard, okay? But only some of these people are clearing mains. Why is that? This is because they use data to substantiate their answers, okay? So some people just write the generalized version of the answer and some people add a little bit of legitimate data to differentiate their answers. See, in this question, in the introduction, if you write the points that we saw, that is, there is a huge disparity between the common people and the tribal people and this is stated in the state of India's tribal people's health report and write one or two findings, your answer will get a huge traction. See, it will create legitimacy in the eyes of the evaluator. So, you will definitely fetch more marks compared to a person who has written a very generalized answer. So, this is why these points are important for your mains examination. Okay. So, now moving on. So, in addition to these points, the report also gives some recommendations to address the disparity faced by the tribal population. Of the given recommendation that is mentioned in the report, the author has highlighted three important ones. Let us see the important recommendations. The first recommendation is to launch a national tribal health action plan. It has to be launched with the goal to bring the status of health and health care at par with the respective state averages in the next 10 years. This is the first recommendation. That is to launch a national tribal health action plan to address the disparity. Okay. The second recommendation is to address the 10 priority health problems such as the health care gap, the human resource gap and the governance problems. For this, the committee has suggested 80 measures. We are not going to see the 80 measures, but this is the second recommendation given by the report. Okay. The third one is allocation of additional money so that the per capita government health expenditure on tribal people becomes equal to the stated goal of the National Health Policy 2017. See, what does National Health Policy 2017 says? It says that the allocation to the health sector should be 2.5% of the GDP. 
so based on the national health policy the report also suggests that for the tribal health care 2.8% of the total health budget should be allocated okay so these are the three main recommendations that is given in the state of india's tribal people's health report see these recommendation were given in the year 2018 itself government has to take steps to address the constraints in the tribal health system with substantive solutions our prime minister has already signaled his intention by electing a president from a tribal background so if the problem of tribal health care is realized then the tribal health mission can be the path to a peaceful health revolution for the 11 crore tribal people here the health minister and the states with sizable tribal population should take the initiative apart from this one more thing should be done by the government it is regarding the tribal sub plan it is the official policy of allocating and spending additional financial outlay equal to the percentage of scheduled tribe population in the state but this has not been done by the states see in 2015 16 annually 15000 crore should have been additionally spent on tribal health but no one knows what happened the issue exists because there is no separate data on tribal people's health or on the money spent for them and this also should be rectified okay that's all regarding this discussion see in this discussion we saw the major points mentioned in the state of india's tribal people's health report then we also saw the three main recommendation given in the report itself after that we saw one of the suggestion given by the author of this opened article so i hope this discussion was helpful so with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article this news article talks about the hindu minority and guardianship act 1956 see the parliamentary standing committee on personal public grievance law and justice recently made some of the recommendations to amend the act this is why the act has made news today using this as an opportunity let us quickly go through some of the important features of the hindu minority and guardianship act 1956 firstly understand this the hindu minority and guardianship act 1956 codifies the laws regarding minority and guardianship mainly it considers the welfare of the child as its core for example take a minor that is a person below the age of 18 years Under this act they are considered incapable of taking care of themselves or handling their affairs as a result they require help support and protection so in such a case guardians will be appointed to take care of their body and their property okay so this is the reason why the hindu minority and guardianship act 1956 is codified okay also remember the act was established to empower the guardians and ward act of 1890 and to provide better right and protection to children instead of just acting as a replacement of a already prevalent act okay so this is the basic introduction about the act see in this act two provisions are making controversy that is section 6 and section 7 see section 6 of the hindu minority and guardianship act says that in the case of a hindu minor boy and a hindu minor unmarried girl the father is the natural guardian and after him the mother will be the natural guardian and section 7 of the same act provides that the natural guardianship of an adopted son who is a minor passes on to the adoptive father and after him to the adoptive mother that is the act does not provide for joint guardianship and it does not recognize the mother as the guardian of a minor legitimate child unless the father is deceased or found unfit see this is discriminatory right so the issue here is in both the cases the act gives preference to the father over mother this goes against the right to equality and right against discrimination guaranteed under article 14 and 15 of the constitution so the committee felt that there is a urgent need to amend the hindu minority and guardianship act and accord equal treatment to both mother and father as natural guardians okay the parliamentary panel also called for a review of the child custody in case of marital disputes and suggested that the courts should be given the authority to award joint custody to both parents considering that for the welfare of the child and to give one parent sole custody and the other visitation privileges 
the amendment also proposed guardianship rights to the differently abled and those suffering from autism and cerebral palsy people suffering from mental health problems as well as senior citizens so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw two controversial provisions in the hindu minority and guardianship act 1956 that is section 7 and section 6 then we also saw the proposed amendments to the hindu minority and guardianship act okay that's all regarding this discussion now let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article see this editorial article see in this article the author basically says that macro variable projections that is projections of gdp inflation balance of payment etc will become difficult due to the uncertain times we are living in he quotes what are all the uncertain things that is happening in the world right now this is the overall structure of the editorial article so in this discussion we will see what are all the uncertain things that the author of this editorial has highlighted and how it will make the projection of the macro variables difficult the first thing that the author highlighted is uncertainty caused due to pandemic associated lockdowns see currently the world is going through a phase of stagflation So what is stagflation see simply stagflation means when stagnation and inflation occurs at the same time here stagnation is nothing but slow down in the economy so during stagflation economy will slow down and inflation will increase first let us see what causes inflation see in the present scenario pandemic associated lockdowns are leading to inflation china is the world manufacturing hub okay due to severe lockdowns exports from china has declined okay this has affected the global supply chain so due to this inflation is increasing due to inflation people's real income is decreasing here you must know what is the difference between real income and nominal income see nominal income is the face value of the income we receive and when this is adjusted to inflation we get real income for example if i am getting a salary of 10000 it is my nominal income but due to inflation i am losing some money right that when it is adjusted to inflation it becomes the real income so generally nominal income will be greater than real income during the period of inflation now coming back so due to supply chain disruption caused due to the pandemic inflation is increasing and due to inflation increase real income in the hands of the people is decreasing what happens when i have little money to spend i will buy little right so since people's real income are decreasing people are less ready to spend their money due to this demand is decreasing so since demand is decreasing the production is also decreasing due to decrease in production the economy is contracting so here what actually has happened our economy has contracted but at the same time inflation is increasing so due to this at the current moment the world is in the face of stagflation okay but right now after the second and the third wave the impact of the virus has declined and due to increasing vaccination cover our immunity has also increased but in case of china presently the government is severe with lockdowns even if there is a presence of one or two cases severe lockdowns are imposed so due to this still the global supply chain has not recovered so this is causing uncertainty and due to this uncertainty what the author in this editorial says is that the determination of macroeconomic variable is turning difficult this is the first point mentioned by the author okay the second is regarding the russia ukraine war see in our discussions also we have covered this topic a number of times due to russia ukraine war the world is facing lot of problems see due to this war the western powers has imposed lot of sanctions on russia we all know russia produces huge amount of petroleum products and natural gas due to the increased sanctions on russia this production is affected so due to this the price of oil and natural gas in the global market is increased and this is causing inflation everywhere in the world and the second is regarding ukraine see ukraine is considered as the grain basket of europe due to the war exports from ukraine like sunflower seeds wheat and everything are affected so this also causes inflation not just in india even in the developed countries like united states and uk and the rest of the european countries inflation is at the all time high this is why the fed has increased the interest rate in us here when i say fed fed is nothing but the central bank of united states and uh, 
when i say interest rate it is nothing but the repo rate in united states and due to the increase in interest rate by the us federal reserve investors are pulling money from our capital market but how is us federal reserve increasing interest rate results in investors pulling money from our capital market see it is very simple see earlier us federal reserve kept the interest rate very low so the us banks had lot of money that is they had lot of cheap which they can borrow from the us federal reserve since they have lot of money they provided it at a cheap rate of interest as loans to the us entrepreneurs okay so the other investors did not find any takers in the us market so the excess fund the investors had they invested their excess fund in emerging countries like india but right now the us federal reserve has increased the interest rate and this has resulted in increased cost of fund for the us banks so what they did they increased the interest rate at which they offer loan to the consumers due to this there is a demand for other source of investment in the us market so what the investors see is it is better to invest in a safe country like us rather than a volatile market right india so they are pulling their fund from our capital market and investing it back in the states since the investors are pulling dollars from our capital market our exchange rate is affected so this is causing some problems right this is also making determination of macro variables difficult so russia ukraine war indirectly triggered inflation in the developed countries due to inflation in the developed countries the central banks in the developed countries have increased their interest rate due to the increase in interest rate investors are pulling fund from the emerging markets like india and this is affecting our exchange rate and this is making the whole situation highly unpredictable this is the second point mentioned by the author in this editorial the third is regarding the new cold war even if russia ukraine war ends there is a condition in the present global scenario that there is two blocks one block is the western block and it is led by the united states and in the other side there is russia and china see the western powers using various methods and groupings like quad aukus are trying to isolate china and contain its global rise so china is forming its local group with russia so this is making the global politics very vulnerable and volatile so any time anything can happen so this makes the prediction of economic variables in the global market very difficult for our statisticians so this makes the prediction and the determination of macro variables very difficult so this is the third point mentioned by the author the last point mentioned is data related worries the quality of any prediction depends upon the data that it uses so presently the data that our statistician use are unreliable and in some places we are not getting enough data also so this is making the macro variable determination and prediction very difficult so these are the four important points mentioned by the author in this editorial that is making the macro variable projection very difficult in the present scenario and that's all regarding this discussion with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article see yesterday lok sabha passed two bills first is the energy conservation amendment bill 2022 this bill provides for the establishment of carbon credit markets and it brings large residential buildings under the energy conservation regime the next is the new delhi international arbitration center amendment bill 2022 This bill changed the name of arbitration center to the India International Arbitration Center. So in this discussion let us focus on some of the important provisions of the both bills that is Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022 and the New Delhi International Arbitration Center Amendment Bill 2022. Let us start with the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill 2022. See the bill seeks to amend the Energy Conservation Act 2001. It seeks to establish carbon markets. It also seeks to enhance the scope of energy conservation building code. The amendment also has provisions to amend the penalty provisions. And finally, the bill seeks to increase the number of members in the governing council of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. But what is this carbon market? Before that, you must know about carbon trading. See, in carbon trading, governments set the overall limit or cap on the amount of emissions that are allowed from significant sources of carbon. 
here sources of carbon include the power industry automotive sector air travel everything government then issues permits up to the agreed limit and these are either given free or auction to companies in the sector if a company curbs its own carbon significantly it can trade the excess permit on carbon market for cash if it is not able to limit its emission it may have to buy extra permit so here the carbon markets turn emission reduction and removal into tradable assets now coming back to the news article while replying to the discussion on the bill power and new renewable energy minister made it clear that carbon credit would not be exported and it would only be utilized domestically he also said that india will not permit the export of credits until it fulfill the promises that india made at the conference of party 21 and the conference of party 26 So this is about carbon trading and carbon market. The second important provision of the amendment is the bill obligated the use of non-fossil source of energy. See under the act the central government is empowered to specify energy consumption standards. In addition to this the bill added that government may mandate the designed consumers to meet a minimum share of energy consumption from non-fossil sources. and for this different consumption thresholds may be specified for different non fossil sources and consumer categories if they fail to meet the obligation for the use of energy from non fossil fuels then they will be punishable with a penalty up to 10 lakhs it will also attract additional penalty of up to twice the price of oil equivalent of energy consumed see this is very simple earlier some days ago we discussed about the electricity amendment bill right in that we saw that power distribution companies are mandated to purchase certain amount of power from the renewable energy sector okay likewise this amendment what it seeks to do is it will mandate the consumers that is us to procure certain amount of power from the renewable energy sector see this is mainly done to give a boost to renewable energy production only by giving a boost to renewable energy production we will be able to meet our carbon emission reduction targets okay so this is what this bill seeks to achieve so this is about the energy conservation amendment bill 2022 now let us move on to the new delhi international arbitration center amendment bill 2022 see this bill amends the new delhi international arbitration center act 2019 This 2019 Act provides for setting up of the New Delhi International Arbitration Center and designates it as an Institute of National Importance. Now, let us see some of the important features of the Amendment Bill. Firstly, the New Delhi International Arbitration Center Amendment Bill 2022 renames the New Delhi International Arbitration Center as the India International Arbitration Center. This is the first major amendment. second is relating to alternative dispute resolution mechanism see according to this amendment bill the arbitration center must work hard to make it easier to undertake local and international arbitration and conciliation the bill expands this by including conduct of other forms of alternative dispute resolution as well the central government through regulation will specify the manner of conduct of arbitration and other forms of alternative dispute resolution see here i mentioned a term called arbitration see this is nothing but a judiciary related jargon see it is just a complicated word but what it means is very simple see how we used to resolve dispute in our family consider this if me and my brother is having a dispute what we will do is we will call our father to come and settle the dispute i will state my claim and my brother will state his claim we after arguing my father will come to a conclusion and give a decision after he gives the decision me and my brother will abide by the decision this is what is called arbitration okay so the advantage of arbitration is there is no need to go by the judicial route in india judiciary is little bit slow it takes a lot of time and significant amount of resources to arrive at a judgment so to provide an alternative method of dispute resolution this arbitration is proposed see internationally this arbitration is mainly used to settle disputes in the commercial sectors okay so this is about arbitration and this bill seeks to promote international and local arbitration by making arbitration very easy and this bill also renames the new delhi international arbitration center as the india international arbitration center so that's is regarding this amendment bill 
so in this discussion we saw two recent amendments that were passed in the lok sabha first is regarding energy conservation amendment bill 2022 and the other is regarding new delhi international arbitration center amendment bill 2022 so with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article see this article here it says that a cluster of 74 carnelian beads was unearthed on monday at kondagai in shivaganga district as per the article this is the first time carnelian beads have been found at this burial site and the beads were found inside an urn and this is the crux of the news article given here in this context we are going to see about the excavation sites in shivaganga district See in the year 2013-14 the archaeological survey of India carried out exploration in 293 sites along the Vaigai river valley in Theni, Dindukal, Madurai, Shivaganga and Ramnathapuram districts based on the exploration Keeladi in Shivaganga district was chosen for evacuation and the excavation led to theories that Sangam era which was considered to have started from 300 BC could have started earlier that is during the 6th century BCE one another significance of the excavation is that the indus valley civilization in india happened between 5000 BCE and 1500 BCE in the northwestern part of the country the civilization crumbled in 1500 BCE and it is believed that the people might have moved to the south of india the pictographic script used by the indus valley people is known as the indus script and historians speculate that the language could have been dravidian now the recent discovery at keeladi shows that there is a possibility that these two cultures were connected and with this info let us see the clusters of keeladi today archaeologists work in different villages near keeladi which are called keeladi clusters these places include keeladi agaram kontagai and manalur and the article today is about the excavation in the kontagai site Now let us see some of the important findings from the excavation particularly from the Kontagai site see Kontagai which is about 4 kilometers away from Keeladi is thought to be the burial site of the Keeladi civilization so various urns and skeletons are found from this site let us see what are the excavations that are made in Kontagai one of the urns found was intact with the lid others contained skeletons in them One urn contained single skeleton while the other contained two skeletons which could have been a married couple but the experts have to find the gender one of the burial urn contained a small sword vessels and terracotta ring the presence of the sword may be indicative of the fact that the skeleton belonged to a male and he might have been a warrior or a soldier next a human sized skeleton surface in a trench was excavated in the site and experts say the skeleton is 183 cm in length and 35 cm in breadth apart from this archaeologists also stumbled upon a skeleton measuring 75 cm in height it was found between two urns and it may belong to a child the latest skeleton was found at the depth of 1.5 feet so all these indicates that different types of burials were practiced pit burial urn burial surface burial etc Experts say that some of the urns contained ashes also so this might indicate that person may have died elsewhere and after cremation the ashes must have been brought to the burial site to perform rituals also experts say that skeletons were found in seated positions so it is believed that people might have lowered the urn when the person was still alive because placing a dead body into a urn in a seating position is very difficult It is also found out that people from that era offered food that is called as padayal in Tamil in pots along with the burial urns. Experts say that from the remaining sediments of the food particles in the pots we can trace the food culture of the Keeladi people. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw various excavation that is made in the Kondagai site which is part of the Keeladi cluster. So with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article. Look at this open article titled The Fight for Fiscal Autonomy. This article is written by a spokesperson of DMK government. So it's obvious that this article will criticize the central government. But we can extract some data and some relevant point from this article which can be used in our main censor. See, this article essentially states that important schemes and programs that will satisfy the basic necessity of the population are implemented by the state government. 
but the tax structure in our country is such that the center is has the autonomy this affects the state government's ability to implement important schemes and it also affects the fiscal federalism in our country okay so this is the basic structure of this article in this article the author highlights two facts to say that the fiscal nature in our country is biased towards the center the first thing that the author highlight is regarding cess and surcharge see we all know cess and surcharge can be only implemented by the union government okay the revenue realized from the cess and surcharge goes into the consolidated fund of india on the side note consolidated fund of india is mentioned in the article 266 okay the other point regarding cess and surcharge is the revenue realized by the union government from these are not shared with state okay and uh, in the present trend the union government has been imposing more cess and surcharge okay so the author says the states are losing their revenue and the revenue that the center gets from the cess and surcharge are not shared with state so this is the first point he mentions and the second point what he mentions is there is substantial erosion of states fiscal anatomy due to faulty distribution of revenue between the states he basically claims that developed states are spending more money or losing more money and the not so developed states are gaining more money here he quotes a data he says that only 30 paisa returns to tamil nadu for every rupee it contributes to the union but in case of states like up and bihar they get 2 to 3 rupees for every rupee they contribute to the center okay so there is a bias here right he counters this bias also he says this affects the fiscal autonomy of the states and thereby affecting the states ability to make useful expenditure for the public so these are the two points he mentioned in the oped article so these two points can be repurposed in our answer in our mains examination also other than that he criticizes our government's revenue structure itself see of the total tax revenue realized by the union government 50% come from indirect tax see this is faulty at base because we know that direct tax is progressive and indirect tax is regressive this is because a poor person and a rich person pays different amount of direct tax see if a person is earning only 5 or 10 lakhs he will pay a particular amount of direct tax if a person is earning 5 to 10 crores he will pay more tax so direct tax is considered progressive and with direct tax economic equality in our country can be ensured but in case of indirect tax both the rich person and the poor person will pay the same amount this is leading to increased inequality in the country he substantiates this point by quoting two data first is regarding world inequality report 2022 and other is a fact provided by world poverty clock according to world inequality report 2022 in india 1% of the population hold 22% of the national income and 10% of the population hold 57% of the national income what this fact says that economically india is highly unequal because while 10% hold 57% of the national income 90% of the population rely only on 43% of the national income so there is huge economic disparity in india and the other data that the author mentions is regarding world poverty clock According to the World Poverty Clock report India has the second highest number of extremely poor see these two data can be used in our answer consider in mains you are getting a question about raising inequality in India and what are the steps that the government can take to address them in the introduction and in the first part of the answer to highlight that India is becoming highly unequal you can quote these two data that is data provided in the world inequality report 2022 and the report of world poverty clock so this is how you have to use the data in your main answer and like i already said in the previous discussion only by quoting data you can realize more marks in the main answer okay i hope this discussion was helpful with this let us conclude the news article discussion session and take up the practice prelims questions We have four practice prelims questions today. Let us see them one by one. Let us take up the first question. Which of the following are related to alternate dispute resolution mechanism? First one online dispute resolution, second one arbitration, third one mediation, fourth one neutral evaluation and fifth one conciliation. 
See, the correct answer here is option B, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. All the mechanisms given here are alternative dispute resolution mechanism. In this arbitration, we discussed today. And online dispute resolution mechanism, we discussed on our 6th August discussion. Okay. So, today we will see the rest of the alternate dispute resolution mechanisms. First, let us take conciliation. Conciliation is a method in which an expert is appointed to resolve a dispute by convincing the parties to agree upon an agreement. This is conciliation. Then there is neutral evaluation. It is also called early neutral evaluation. See, in this process, a neutral third party hears the presentations of the parties in dispute and then provides his opinion regarding the dispute. This is neutral evaluation. And the last one is mediation. See, in mediation, the neutral party does not have any power to make decisions. Okay? But what the neutral party does is, it allows the two parties at dispute to talk and come to their conclusion by themselves. This is called mediation. And the common phenomenon among all the five given mechanisms here is, in all these, disputes are settled out of court. Okay? They are mainly used for settling commercial disputes. So, once again, the answer for this question is option B, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Moving on, see this is a four statement question. Four statements are given, we have to find the correct statement. See, these four statements, they are asking which among the four statements are advantages of carbon markets. See, here the correct answer is option A, 1, 2, 3 only. Because carbon markets effectively encourage less carbon intensive lifestyle. And the second statement is also correct because carbon market incentivizes entities to reduce emissions beyond their mandated limit. Because when there is a well functioning carbon market, these entities that reduce their emissions can sell the unused permits in the carbon market and make money. So the second statement is also correct. Let us take up the third statement. It will spur innovation in energy efficiency. This is true because when a carbon market is fully functional, the unused carbon pyramids are monetized. So, to enjoy the monetary advantage, more energy innovations will be spurred. So, statement 1, statement 2, statement 3 are correct. The fourth statement is wrong. It does not enable greenwashing. But here, what is greenwashing? Greenwashing means a process in which companies falsely market their green credential. For example, misrepresentation of climate neutral products or services in the market. If you can eliminate this statement, you can also arrive at the answer here. So once again, the correct answer here is option A, 1, 2, 3 only. Let us move on to the third question. This question is about the archaeological survey of India. It is a two statement question. We have to find the correct statement. Let us take up the first statement. It functions under the Ministry of Education. This statement is incorrect because Archaeological Survey of India functions under the Ministry of Culture. Let us take up the second statement. Maintenance of ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains of national importance is a prime concern of Archaeological Survey of India. See, this statement is correct because it is one of the stated objectives of the Archaeological Survey of India. So, the correct answer here is option B, 2 only. Moving on to the last question. This question is in regards to Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act 1956. It is a three statement question and we have to find the correct statement. This is a quiz question for you. This question can be easily addressed by our discussion. So find the correct answers and post it in the comment section. Moving on, let us take up the main question for today. Let me read out the question. The tribal healthcare system is sick and tribal people need more substantiative solution. Substantiate. State what can be done to improve their situation. See, this is a very straightforward question. Here, the key word is substantiate. The statement itself, it says that the tribal healthcare system is sick. So, you have to substantiate this statement. That is, you have to give evidence from reports and findings that indeed tribal healthcare system is sick. So, for this part, you can write the findings of the state of India's tribal people's health report that we saw in our discussion and in the second part of the question 
they are asking us to suggest the ways to improve the tribal healthcare system see this part also we discussed in our discussion so as a way forward you write the steps that can be taken to address the sickness in the tribal healthcare system so this is the structure for this question interested aspirants write the answer and post it in the comment section so with this let us end our discussion if you like today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel thank you for listening